Hello and welcome to Box to Box, the football talk show brought to you by Sportsology TV with myself, Ali Drew and my co-host, Uni. On last week's episode, we were joined by Tony Cotty talking all things West Ham. We were joined by Jolene Lescott, who was talking about Man City's amazing form and being top of the table. Also, Everton beating Liverpool, very important game to mention. And Jamie O'Hara joined us talking about Spurs' poor run of form and also could it be the end for Mourinho. But on this week's episode... Guys, this week we're going to a former football player, somebody who's played for Plymouth Argyle, Ipswich and Leeds United. He's now retired and he owns a gym um, and keeping himself busy after football, uh, none other than David Norris. David, how are you doing, my friend? How are you keeping? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, um, as good as can be during these times, but yeah, I'm, I'm all good. Yeah, because obviously, as we say, you're a gym owner and the last year has been an absolute nightmare for that industry. You know, you're, having to, you're still closed at the moment. How have you found the last year? Yeah, it, it's been tough. Um, it's been tough because uh, it's, it's gone on so long. I think first time, obviously, we had a little bit of help with the grants and stuff. Um, but because it, it's been on, been going on so long now, it, it, it's been quite tough. Um, we've tried to do things. We, we we do Zoom classes for our members and we've um, we've let them take the equipment if they kept their memberships on and stuff. Uh, so we've managed to try and keep uh, ticking over um, that way. And then personally, myself, um, I've still been able to train footballers and boxers um because it's classed as a place of work for those guys so uh that's been okay um and then also with uh, i working at file doing their strength and conditioning so uh, uh, the gym i am i own it but um i don't take so many of the classes so uh i've been managed to keep my personal training stuff's been reasonably okay um just talking about sort of football at this present time things are it's been a bit of a crazy footballing season in general. I think the pilot pop games, the VAR, you talk about, you could talk about football for about four or five hours with what's going on this season. Yeah. But talking about one of your former clubs, Leeds United, just talk to me about them, David. They've had a, a season where they've impressed people with their style, but they've also lost quite a few games at the same time. What, what do you make of Bielsa and Leeds United? Um, I, 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 lo- I love it. Yeah, I, I love him. I love his style of play. Um, I think... They are. That's exactly what you've said. There is is how it's going to be with the way they attack games. I think they're going to win a lot of games. They're going to entertain, um, but they're going to concede a lot of goals, and they're going to they're going to lose a few games as well. But overall, I think I think most people have been impressed with the way they've attacked it. They haven't come to defend um, and just try and get through the season and stay up. They've they've they've, they've had a go at all teams, no matter who they are. Uh, the intensity they play at is refreshing, um, and and it's you know it's, it's it's nice to watch. So you know they've they've done really well. I mean, they're in 11th at the moment in the table, which is is good. You know, I think that anyone, any Leeds fan, you know, coming into the season would be would have been happy, you know, that they're sort of heading towards the top half of the table. You know, they're getting there. Um, they obviously lost at the weekend to Aston Villa. But do you think that they can realistically sort of push on now? And Because they are a bit up and down just because of the way that they play. But can they push up higher in the table, do you think, for the rest of the season? I think they could, yeah. I think it's, it's a strange season. Some of the results and, and teams beating other teams that we've had, uh, I think, especially with the current situation, making it you know with no crowds, it, it even more interesting. But I think they can. I, I personally don't think they will. I think they'll end up in and around maybe just outside that top six, top seven. Um, just with the, the the way they do play, they will concede. They will lose games as well as win them. But I still think that would be a good season. You know, um, uh, first one back in and no crowd, which would definitely, I think, help them um, with that. So the level of support and, you know, the, the, the fanatical uh, fans there would definitely be intimidating for play- people to go to and would really back- give the players a lot of uh, support as well. Um, so I think that would make a big difference as well. So I think if they can finish in and around that mid- mid-table top half, it's, it's a good season. Because also just from the game on, it has been talked about, but the game on the weekend especially, the state of the pitch at Ellen Road was was a was an obvious factor. People were slipping and sliding everywhere. I think even the goal, there was a little bit of a slip just before the, the goal went in. Um, is is that you know? Do you think that's going to be fixed? It, it does seem very noticeable at Ellen Road, the state of the pitch. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, you know what, what what that's all about, to be honest. Uh, it Do you think it's worse fun. than other than other stadiums and other clubs' it, pitches? It seems yeah. to, be, doesn't it? yeah. You definitely seem to be seeing a, uh, more than a few players slipping about. Uh, and obviously, I think most players would, a lot of players would prefer to play and they wear molded molded boots these days rather than than studded boots. But 
um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's noticeable. You've spotted it. And I think a lot of people have, but I'm not sure. I don't think it's a, it's a tactic of theirs anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're used to playing on it. <laughs> uh, David, talking about Leeds, then um, a, a player that sort of stood out for me, which I've thought's been amazing this season, is one of the later signings in Rafinha. Um, he's got some serious techers, man. He's, he he can right. take on players. He can he can finish. He can assist. Um, talk to me about him. I'm someone that I'm really really impressed with this season. Yeah, yeah, he's, he, he's done great. Um, like you say, he's, he's pleasing on the eye. Uh, anyone who can an attack people and beat people and, and create and score goals is going to stand out. Um, and so he's been like, what, you know, star man. Um, the way the way he settled and, and come in and, and, and you know attacked at the Premier League like he has um, and the level of players, it's, it's it's good it's good to see. And it's not taking him long. To, you know, it's not taking him any sort of time to settle. He's he's, had a, he's been on fire. Especially with uh, when you look at, for example, Bruno Fernandes, when he came to Manchester United, he set the Premier League alight. He sort of just came into the Premier League and sometimes being a foreigner from a different league, it takes them a longer time. But we saw it with Bruno and with Rafinha, we're seeing, it, we're seeing it straight away that, you know, he doesn't need time to adapt. How far can, can, this, can this kid go? He's still quite young. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he, I mean, he, he obviously he can go right to the top. He's, he's playing in the top league and... And, and bossing it at times and, and doing his thing, you know, really well. So, you know, it, it, it can, you know, go right, right up to the top. And I'm sure there'll be some of them top teams that I'll be keeping an eye on him anyway. Um, but yeah, the, the, with the settling, I mean, sometimes it does take, you know, foreign players a little bit of time to settle, especially they're coming from different leagues that don't have the intensity of, of the Premier League. Uh, but some do just manage to come in and, and, and it just clicks right team. You know, right position, right place, right time, and 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 they and they get the you know they start off on you know on the on the right foot and and they don't look back. Who else has impressed you this season from that team? Uh, Calvin Phillips. Oh, yeah. Um, one I'd keep a little bit more of an eye on because of he was there when I was there. So there's only probably t- t- a couple that are still left. Um, and when he used to come and train with us, obviously he was only a young lad then, and I mean he. It, when they when the young lads come and train with the first team, it doesn't they don't necessarily have to stand out. But if they can go and step into that environment and not look out of place, you think mm, they've got a chance uh, rather than looking overawed or they or they can't step up. He'd come in and train with us. He'd be kicking people, flying into tackles, you know, beating people. So I, I thought at the time, you know, he'll have a chance because he's got a good mentality and 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 you know he's kicked right on. Um, he, he can pass, he can get up and down, he can shoot, score. Uh, he's obviously got his England, you know, his England caps now. So. Uh, I've got to say, he's, I didn't probably expect him to do as well as he has done so soon, um, but he's impressed me. Did you watch the game at the weekend between Chelsea and Man United? No. Because there was the main, I mean, the main talking point from every weekend, I think, at the moment is VAR and yeah. the issues around it. I'm sure you've seen it, that, that the, the what well, was there a penalty, was there not? Was it handball? VAR, judging by what the referee saw, it wasn't given as a penalty. And yeah. um, what do you make of not just that incident, but just just all the sort of debate around VAR and the, the sort of poor decision making around it? Yeah, it's just just turning into a bit of a shambles at, um, at the at the minute. Uh, it's like you say, every talking point after games tends to come back to to VAR. Uh, at first, I thought it was going to be good. I thought because uh, of when you see some of them goal line technology ones or, or clear and obvious fouls not given or, or penalties given that shouldn't be, then, you, you know, it could be frustrating. And I thought, oh, this would tidy up some of them big decisions that leave you really frustrated. But overall, I think it's it, it's just been a little bit of a nightmare. I think it's it's, it's undermined the referees. Um, it's, you know, it, the worst one for me is the goals. Now when teams score and your first thing is to look around and is it going to be allowed is it not rather than just running off and celebrating and even as fans you don't probably jump up straight away you, you, you're thinking yourself right has anything happened in there that can get this disallowed so it, I think it could be um, helpful it's just not working at the minute though and it's causing problem after problem and talking point after talking point Another thing that's been talked about recently is uh, British referees uh, Graham Souness on Sky Sports last week had a bit of a rant saying the level of refereeing is quite poor at this present time. And um, Julian Lesko, who we spoke to last week, actually was there and they, they were sort of discussing this matter. This week, I'm not sure if you got to watch it, but um, West Ham were playing Brighton. Yeah. This guy, is, uh, you must have watched it, but yeah. he stood there, he's blown the whistle, they've scored, and then he blew it again whilst the ball's made out saying, no, I didn't blow the... Like, it was so confusing. Then he gives the goal... Then he doesn't. And uh, it was just like... The player even asked, can I take it? Can I take now? Can I go? <laughs> so, it's a mess. 
what, what, do, what do you make of this? Because like we can point to VAR at times, and but at the end of the game of VAR, like that Man United decision, it, it, the, the guy went to the screen, he looked at it, and he deemed it that it was a, a handball. And looking at it myself, I thought it was. I thought he sort of flicked his hand towards it. Yeah. But there's been many a decision like this where okay, VAR is is a is a, is a focal point. It's a starting point of this discussion, but the referees have run to the screen. They've looked at it themselves and then they've made a decision. Yeah. So where where do we where do we go with this? What's what's going on with referees in 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 British football at the English football at this present time? Yeah, I mean they're taking a lot of stick and um, you know if they're making th- that that what happened at Brighton though was just like that that doesn't help them at all. It was it was a shambles. Uh, hey, you say he blew the wh- he asked if he could take it, he took yeah, it quick it, and then blew it when it was and then took it back, disallowed it, allowed it. It was it was just it was comical, but. Um, I think the referees, uh, I think the VAR doesn't help them over, it's not been helping them like it should. I feel like most decisions will be black and white once you can see it back in slow motion. And then if not, then the referee should be, a, it should be his opinion, right? If, if, if sometimes you'll see something, is his hand, we're not sure, the referee makes a decision and that's it, like he would if it was a normal game without VAR. Um, but with the referees, the only thing that I've, frustrates me is, uh, you know, the, the arrogance of them sometimes with, with decision making and, that the, sometimes you can't speak to them as players and just asking questions that can be very dismissive. Uh, I don't know. They were talking this morning about making them come out and do the the, the interviews after. Um, I'm not sure that would work either. I think that would make it a bit worse. But the, 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 it's something that has to be looked at because they are taking a lot of flack. Yeah, because there's there's been talk this morning about the audio because we're not you're not allowed to listen to the audio from what they say. I, I think in seven years they can maybe change change it and we could listen to it. But by then, what's the point? <laughs> do you think that that should be allowed, or do you think that the conversations between the players and the refs should stay should stay no, on the pitch? I think it should be allowed. I think it'd be great. I think it, it for one it tidy up the way players treat referees because they, they, that's not always great either. And you know, I've probably been. You know, guilty of that myself in the past, where you you think you can get into a referee's head, you can get you know keep chipping away and get into him, and you might get some decisions later down the line. But it doesn't mean it's right. I mean, if you watch the rugby boys, the way they speak to the refs and the, and the respect and the way that and, and we're allowed to hear them, so you can hear exactly what's going on. I think it'd be good. I think you'd get more respect for the ref from the players. You'd be able to understand a little bit more from watching it from the outside what exactly is going on and being said, rather than thinking what like what happened there. What's what's this carnage going on here? What what a mess. So I think that I think it'd be good. I don't I don't see a problem with that. I think it'd clear up a lot of things. And like I say, I think it'd bring the respect levels um, and some of the explanations from the referees right up to speed with for everyone to see. The problem with the whole VAR thing is that whoever the rule makers are, they're changing the rules uh, reactively, not proactively. So for example, we saw Man City a couple of weeks ago. Rodri was in an offside position. The defender Tyrone Mings at the time had the ball. He comes in, like he's about 10 yards offside. He runs in behind him, takes the ball off him, and then Gundogan scores. Then the rule maker saw that they thought, oh no, there's a loophole in the thing. Let's yeah. change it now. So not not like let's 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 change the, if there's any holes in there, let's fill yeah. them holes beforehand. They've got to wait for something to happen and then they fill holes in, which seems to be a problem. That's they were talking about the handball oh. decision that at the start of the season to what's happening now. Things are changing, and it just seems it's so frustrating because it seems like we're losing that essence of enjoying football again. It's just, it's weird. What, what, what do you make of it? Because back in your day, there was none of this nonsense. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. The, 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 what back in the day, it would be the referee, you'd have the referee coming at the start of the season and he'd tell you, these are the new rules for this season. Yeah. This is what we're going to be doing. We're changing it. I'll tap on this. This will be punishable now. And you'd get a list and they'd talk you through them all. And that would be it. Hardly nothing else would change for a season. They, they're just bringing in new rules. Like you say at the minute, it's, it's making it worse because you're talking about it every week, but then they're constantly adding things, changing things all the time and just making it even more confusing and, you know, hard work for everyone. So, yeah, it, it, it just needs re-looking at, I think. I think after this season, you know, s- sit down and you, they've had the good trial and error periods of time now to go through. Look, these are the, these are the problems you've had. This is what's happening. That's get it right, exactly how we're going to use it, stick to it, and then just roll it out for the season. But yeah, it's it, it's, it's a bit of a mess at the minute. Right, moving on to talking about the title race, if there even is a race anymore. Uh, Man City are on an incredible run of form. They've had so many games unbeaten. Do you think that that they've got the the sort of title in the bag now? Do you see any, any upsets happening? I don't think so now, no. Not with the run of form they're on... Um, the squad, the way they're playing, the, everything's just, you know, 
working for them. So I, I can't see I can't see anyone catching them now. It'll just be a, a matter of how many points they're gonna they're gonna do it by. And and it's not like there's a, you know a strong team that consistently behind them like Liverpool, um, like Liverpool, Man City, fought it out last year. Uh, it's the others are still too inconsistent. Um, Liverpool are obviously way off it this year. Man United can still be inconsistent, and so and so can the others. It's theirs to lose now, and I think it's just a matter of time and, and how many points they're going to win it by. David, you played as a midfielder. Uh, which midfielders have stood out for you uh, this season? Uh, in the Premier League? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe like Fernandes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I haven't overly followed it as like I used to. I used to be what I, I used to go out for if I go out for food, I'd have to make sure there was a big screen in the place, you know, so I could keep an eye on the footy. And then since I retired, like this last year, two year, may, maybe more so, I, I just haven't um followed it as much. And then with no crowds, I've struggled to stick with it for watching games all the way through. It's just not the same for me. I don't get the same enjoyment out of it. So I've probably not followed this season half as much of as I as I have previous seasons. Do you watch when you watch any games on TV, do you watch it with the crowd noise or without? Yeah, yeah no, I have to watch it. With. <laughs> You've got to. <laughs> yeah, I can't watch it. it, it it's, it's, it's like a friendly. Yeah. It, just does, it just doesn't feel right. How important are the crowd when you're on that pitch? Uh, you've obviously played about over 400 games of pro pre professional yeah. football. How important are they? I think they're massive. Um, I think, obviously, when it's not going well and they're your home fans, it can be a bit difficult and... I played with Leeds, who were fanatical. Um, Leeds was the one place where I, all the clubs I went, Portsmouth had great fans. Uh, Plymouth fans travelled really far. Same with Ipswich. They had, had good fans everywhere. But I think Portsmouth were noisy. The pitch was close in. Re get behind you. But the only team that start cheering the home team, us, when we conceded, straight away they would start trying to get behind us. That didn't happen much. And at Leeds, I'd say normally you have... The, uh, a majority of normal fans and a minority of hardcore. Leeds is the one club I've been at that's flipped. They are hardcore. All uh, it, it, they live and breathe their football, um, and you know that they're, they're, they're a massive bang into their football hardcore fans. But I remember like first games of the season or when you're doing well there, it's, it's some atmosphere to play on, and it does lift you as a player. So I think the fan, it, the fans at certain clubs especially, will make a big difference. Um, yeah, I think Leeds especially it will make a, it will, will make the biggest difference. It's such a shame their first season back in the Premier League and the the fans aren't there because they are yeah. incredible. Their their fans. Yeah, and they've waited so long to get back as well, and and then now they can't for this season. Hopefully that will start changing now. I, th I think they're saying hopefully the last game of the season they might try to get yeah. fans in. Yeah, they they're going to yeah. try to, but it, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Dave, before we let you go, uh, we, we ask you know football players, ex footballers. Uh, a question uh, on their career. So I just want to ask you, the best football player that you've played with? Played with? To be fair, played with, luckily enough to play with some good ones. I was thinking before, um, there was Kanu at Portsmouth. Oh, yeah. Now he must have been, he was probably close to 50 years old then when I was there. <laughs> but the stuff he could do with the ball still, like I, I could imagine him 10 years before thinking, wow, he must have been, been some player like that. He can manipulate a ball like no one I've seen. Um, and then I, I played briefly with Ivan Campo, okay. who just oozed class, uh, you know, in the middle of the park, probably didn't hit two or three K in, in, you know, distance covered, but he was in and around that middle, just spraying balls everywhere. Um, and Jimmy Bullard, he came to Ipswich and I was there at a time we were struggling and lit the place up. Uh, you know, I, he, 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 we was just giving him the ball. I was doing all his running, but he was just making magic happen with the ball. Um, and obviously he's a good character as well. Yeah, big oh, character to have there. Yeah, yeah, great guy. Uh, so probably, probably, you know, it, it, one of those two or threes, um, uh, as, as some of the best I played with, anyway. When so on the pitch, then who was the sort of greatest player that you think you shared a pitch with? So on a sort of opposing team, and you just thought, God, there's just no competing with him. Yeah, I think well, we had some good cup runs because I never played in the Premier League, but we had some good cup runs. Uh, we, we played Man City. Um, and they were strong then, they had Yaya Torre. Oh. And uh, I felt playing against him, it was like, you know, when someone's just holding you on your head, that, that, the, the, the midget, and, and, just, and you're trying to run like that and you can't go anywhere and he's just toying with me. That's what it felt like playing against him. Um, and then probably Frank Lampard as well. Uh, I just, I thought, because of my game was fitness, I just thought I'd get up and down, he gets up and down, I'd be able to compete. But up there, 
I just remember thinking he was dropping shoulders and doing things in one twos and making runs behind my back that I just couldn't see. And I just thought there, that there's the difference. That's why I'm in the championship and he's in the Premier League. You know, he's got that bit, that bit more up there as well. Actually, Jordan Lesko did say that the best player he played with was uh, Yoyo Torre as well. Mm, he did. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's interesting. Um, David, hopefully, you know, if we could speak to you at some point in, in the future, but hopefully gyms open up, your business opens up, you can get keep yourself busy again because uh, hopefully there's some light at the end of this tunnel now, man. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, I know. It seems it, doesn't it? It seems it now with with, with things going to hopefully start re reopening and, and, and restarting again. Um so let's hope so. And then, yeah, we can talk again. And obviously I love, I think you've had a couple of the boxers, the boxers that I train on. Lin, do you have Lyndon Arthur? Yeah, I had Lyndon yeah, Arthur. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you train Lyndon? Like which, which, which other boxers do you train? Uh, sorry? Which other fighters do you train? Uh, I do a lad called Jack Bateson, but he's from Leeds. Okay. Uh, Mark Heffron. Yeah, I know. Manchester, and then and Lyndon Arthur at the minute. Oh, so you're um, based in Manchester, right? Yeah, Bolton. Bolton, yeah. And I've, I go over to Leeds as well. I've got a pl uh, another place there that I work out of as well. Cool. Busy, busy. David, thank you so much. No problem. We'll thank you for again soon. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. That was David Norris talking about his former club, Leeds United, and how well they are doing in their first season in the Premier League for a long time. But stay tuned. We have another episode of Box to Box coming this week. So check that out. It's coming soon. And please keep supporting the channel. Do what you can. Subscribe, like, share, whatever you can. We really appreciate it. And we will see you again soon.